Part 3 begins with a flashback. Beth's biological mother advises her that men will come into her life to teach her different things, but that doesn't make any of them smarter than her. She also advises Beth that most people will settle for anything just to say that they have something. At present, Beth and Benny drive to New York to begin her training. While driving, they play chess by reciting notations on their head. Beth also continues learning Russian while on the road trip. Eventually, they make it to Benny's rundown apartment in New York. He lays out all his chess achievements. Beth seems surprised by the place, and it takes her a while to adjust. Benny gets out an air bed for her and tells her there's no booze in the apartment. The next day, Benny and Beth practice chess intensely. They don't leave the apartment except to buy supplies. Most of their days are spent in front of a chessboard or analyzing famous games. Replaying play after play so Beth can match the best players in the world, the Soviets. One night, Benny invites some friends over and introduces them to Beth. They are Hilton, Arthur, and Cleo. Beth quickly gets to know the female friend, Cleo in the kitchen. She tells Beth that these friends stopped her from killing herself. After preparing food, Benny invites Beth to play simultaneously with all three of them, but she has other plans in mind. She bets him $10 each to play speed chess, and that she'd beat all three of them. Benny agrees, and the games begin. They play three rounds, and she beats all three of them simultaneously over and over again with speed. Eventually, Benny stops the play and tells Beth that she's finally got it. He tells her that no one has done that to him in 15 years. Beth says she is sober which means it must be helping her focus. The next scene cuts to Beth arriving in Paris in 1967. She attends a conference and answers questions, including ones about Borgoff. The press informs Beth that some people are saying that she's too glamorous to be taken seriously when it comes to chess. She responds by saying that it's easier to play chess without the burden of an Adam's apple. Another reporter asked her if she is looking forward to a rematch against Borgoff. Beth replies with a resounding yes. She adds that she always reviewed Borgov's games, especially their match in Mexico City. Eventually, in the tournament, it's Beth versus Borgov. One night, Cleo calls her as she's in Paris. She asks her if she'd like one drink. Beth is tempted and eventually gives in and joins her. The tournament begins, and as usual, Beth defeats her opponents one by one. After a few rounds, the staff approaches her, stating that her next match the final one would be against Borgov. The night before the finals, as Beth is preparing for her match, she receives a phone call. As she is also in Paris, Cleo asks Beth if she'd like one drink. She politely refuses, but Beth is somehow tempted and eventually gives in and joins Cleo. After a few drinks, Beth revealed that she fell in love with Towns. Cleo proposes a toast for unrequited love and proceeds to entertain the men who had been staring at them for quite some time. The next morning, Beth wakes up in the bath. She takes a pill and leaves Cleo in her room. Realizing she is late for the big day, she heads down to her game with Borgov after quickly getting ready. It's evident that Beth is still hungover from last night's party. She tries to gain control over her situation, but as the game progresses, she gets worse. She keeps needing to drink water and Borgov senses that she's not prepared. Cleo joins the audience, and she starts panicking, asking for more water. After a few more moves, it was clear that she would lose the game. A tear rolls down her cheek and Beth resigns. She leaves without saying a word or extending her courtesy to Borgoff. Later, Benny rings her, asking her to come back to New York. But Beth wants to be alone at the moment. To make matters worse, Beth has to launch into legal mode as soon as she gets home. Her lawyer calls, stating that Mr. Wheatley didn't want to sign the papers to make Beth the legal owner of the house. Later, Mr. Wheatley, along with her attorney, comes over to discuss things. Beth speaks directly to him and tells him to live up to his promise, because he adopted her. Obviously, Mr. Wheatley didn't care about her, nor did he care about his wife Mrs. Wheatley. He admits that he didn't want to adopt her and that he had just signed the papers to shut Mrs. Wheatley up. Now he wants to sell the house so Beth has to move somewhere else. Beth offers to buy the house, but she will be subtracting what she paid to bury her adopted mother. Mr. Wheatley hesitatingly agrees and storms off. After that, Beth decides to remodel the house since it was finally hers. She removes the old furniture and replaces the wallpaper. After a while, she receives a letter from the Christian Crusade, a non-profit organization that wants to assist her with her financial needs for the Moscow Invitational. Beth talks about the organization with Ben over the phone. He tells her that it is the same group that helped him when he went to Moscow. He tells her to take the money and go to the competition. Dumbfounded, Beth asks him why they would spend so much money on her. Benny replies that they want her to beat communists for Jesus. While on the phone, Benny tells her that he misses her, hinting at an urge to rekindle their relationship. But Beth doesn't respond. While preparing for a local tournament, Beth decides to dine out just like she and Mrs. Wheatley used to do for enjoyment. 
and to take her mind off things. However, what starts out as a little fun ends up disastrously. She drinks so much that her trash bin is filled up with just empty bottles. Beth continues to spend her time in the house dancing, drinking, and smoking. She almost dies as she passes out and hits her head on her coffee table. At the same time, Harry knocks on her door, but there is no response as Beth is still passed out. When she comes to her senses, Beth hears the phone ring. It is the local tournament director asking her to come early for the tournament tomorrow for photos with the local paper. Beth agrees to come early even though she is a complete mess. The next day, she goes to the tournament where she bumps into a woman. She is the same girl with whom Beth played her first match in the state championship. The girl thanks Beth personally for what she had done by showing the world that women can excel in the world of chess. After their conversation, she goes out for a smoke, where she sees Harry. He confronts Beth, saying he is worried about her, and that she needs help. He's seen her in the supermarket from the office as he is the assistant manager there, and tells her she is becoming an alcoholic. He hopes that he could help her from his experience as his father was an alcoholic too. Harry says that he doesn't want Beth to suffer the same fate as his father. He wishes her luck and drives off when he realizes that she isn't listening to him. After this, Beth does not attend the tournament and goes home instead. Beth later falls asleep and is awakened by a knock on her door. She thinks it's Harry, but to her surprise, it is her old friend, Jolene. The next scene goes into a flashback, where young Beth and her biological mother head to her father's new house. Beth's mother begs him for help, but he's less than pleased to see her though and tells the woman to leave. This catches us up to the moments of Beth and her mother driving along the road just before the horrific accident. Back in the present, Jolene reveals why she's really there. Sadly, Mr. Shable has passed away and there's a funeral upcoming. She wants Beth to attend but can't help but look at the state of her house. We learn that Jolene is currently training to be a paralegal, having fixed herself up from the orphanage days, and clearly turned her life around. Beth meanwhile realizes she needs to do the same with hers. Later, Jolene checks out the bathroom cabinet and sees the vitamin pills. She realizes Beth is addicted to the medication. The pair head on a road trip to visit Beth's old hangout spots. The first is the old trailer she shared with her biological mother. It's pretty run down and this inevitably leads them to the orphanage. Flashes from the past are too much for her so Beth decides not to head inside the orphanage. Instead, she goes to Mr. Shable's funeral where she feels bad for owing him $10 that she never sent after her first tournament. After the service, Beth changes her mind and heads back to the place she spent most of her childhood. She walks around the corridor and senses nostalgia. Miss Deardoff tells her to get back to the chapel while Beth politely agrees, and heads down to the basement where Mr. Shable lived. There, she finds a big pin-up board with all of her newspaper clippings, pictures, and moments through her young life. Mr. Shable had gathered all her achievements and headline stories. She also sees a picture of Mr. Shable and her together and this becomes the breaking point for her. Beth regrets not visiting her master when he was still alive. She realizes Mr. Shable really cared about her and loved her so much. It's all too much for her to bear and Beth breaks down crying in the car with Jolene. Back home, Christian Crusade visits Beth and they want her to make a statement against communism because they feel it spreads atheism. But Beth shuns their beliefs and decides to give back what they've spent on her so far. This means she needs to manage funding herself for the Moscow trip. With nowhere else to turn, Beth rings Benny and asks for money. He's having none of it though, especially after she ditched him in New York, and eventually tells her not to ring again. Beth needs funding soon, so she rings around authorities and banks, but nobody is ready to help her. Later, while playing squash with Jolene, she admits to regretting buying the house. Jolene offers to pay for Beth's trip. She wants to be there for Beth, like family. The scene shifts to Russia in 1968. As part of her trip, Beth has security from the State Department. Her security lays down the rules on the plane such as she has to report anything suspicious, and she's not allowed to drink. Beth keeps mocking the complex rules as some of them lack common sense. She's even told to stay in her hotel and forbidden from speaking to anyone else. On the day of the tournament, Beth wins her first game and sticks to the rules. The Russians are surprised to see a woman like her play in the World Championship, as there has never been a woman who had played against a man. Beth continues to win her games and the more rounds she wins, her popularity rises among the locals with Beth having to sign loads of autographs. She has become a sensation in Russia. Beth continues beating formidable grandmasters in one of the games they have to postpone as it's getting late. Before she heads to her room, she sees her latest opponent with Borgov trying to plan her defeat. 
That night, Beth practices the plays. When the game resumes the following day, she beats the Grandmaster. The opponent tells her that she's the best chess player he's ever played. Taking a bow, she beats her second opponent too but it all builds up to exhaustingly long, mentally taxing games. That night, Beth goes to bed and remembers her biological mother calling her the problem. Her mother asks her to close her eyes as she speeds up the car. Beth then empties her vitamin pills and flushes them down the toilet. We learn that in the final, she is once again playing against the formidable Borgov. The final day arrives and all eyes are set on Borgov and Beth as they compete in their exceptional chess skills on the chessboard. As the two strike their move, the crowd remains captivated by the game played out before them. Midway through though, Borgov decides to adjourn. With the world watching on, Beth tries to remain modest despite her agent's insistence to talk to the press. On the way out she mentions Shabel and what an influence he's been on her, and advises them to print the story. Just before she leaves though, a familiar face from the past shows up. It's Towns. They hug it out before discussing their differing fates in life. As another sign of good news, Harry, Benny, and all the boys phone through from New York to give Beth tips and strategies on how to beat Borgoff. With all the brilliant minds collected together, Beth uses all this knowledge as she prepares to go in for her big achievement. The following day, the final game returns to the table, and it's tense as ever. Beth takes a deep breath and finally understands she doesn't need the pills anymore to harness her power. She sees the chessboard on the ceiling without the pills for the first time. As they keep playing, Borgov asks for a draw. The audience believes Beth should settle but she solemnly shakes her head. It's all about the end game for her. Beth makes her final move, and she looks victorious as she knows what she has just achieved. A smile crosses Borgov's face as he looks her in the eye, saying the game is yours. He resigns, and as the new world champion, Beth sends the crowd into ecstatic applause. In the wake of this, the win brings back a wave of publicity to America where Beth is invited along to play chess with the president in the White House. It's a big deal that she's beat the Soviets at their own game. Instead, Beth decides against going back to America for now and enjoy the bliss she has just achieved. In the final scene, Beth walks among the various chess players in the park in Moscow and enjoys the sudden acclaim she receives from the men and women there. She is encouraged to play chess among the locals there, which she gladly agrees to do. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.